Hey, I'm Lana from Lana Glow Shot Art, and I'm so excited to be taking over these videos and joining the Sketchbox team. I have been an art instructor for over 15 years, and I've been an artist a lot longer than that. I'm inspired by color, nature, and an unquenchable curiosity, and I can't wait to get started with you all. In this video, we'll be unboxing the September Premium Box, and this box is all about gouache and mixing up autumnal colors. Let's get started. The service in this month's box is the Graduate Mixed Media Pad by Canson. This mixed media paper is going to do well with both paint and drawing materials, and the warm natural color is going to be so cohesive with your autumn colors. This double-sided paper features a more textured surface on the front, which is great for painting, and a smoother surface on the back that's going to be really compatible with drawing fine details. As an added bonus, the three by seven inch elongated dimensions are gonna be so fun for playing around with fall theme bookmarks. Our next product is the Archer and Olive Acrylograph Pen in Crimson. This is a water-based acrylic ink that is completely opaque. It goes on so smooth and it is so fun to work with. Before you start drawing with your Acrylograph Pen, you're going to need to activate the paint nib. To do this, make sure that the cap is firmly secured and then shake your pen for 20 seconds. Once your pen is all shaken up, press the nib of your pen into the paper to get the paint to start flowing. Once your ink is flowing freely, you can warm up with some straight lines, some squiggly lines, you can build up lines for more thickness, and you can play around with some hatching. The prompt for this month's box is autumn, and a great way to play around with this theme and to warm up with the Acrylograph pen is to create an autumn themed bookmark. I began with a pencil sketch of the word autumn, and this was just to make sure that things were centered and it was exactly the way that I wanted it before I came in over the top with permanent ink. Then I built up the letters and I really explored the width of the line and built up stronger, deeper layers in some areas. Once the text was completely finished, I began doodling things that reminded me of autumn or fall. I did a feather, an autumn leaf, a snail, and you'll notice that these areas were not things that I planned in advance with pencil. It was just free stream of conscious doodling. And that might mean that things don't end up perfect, but it's also a great creative experiment and you can play around with some really fun lines and responding even to mistakes that you made. And once your ink is dry, you can come right in with an eraser and get rid of any of those pencil lines so it's like they never existed. Next in our box, we have three specially curated Holbein Artist squash pigments, Elm Green, Gardenia Yellow, and Iron Oxide Red. And we'll be mixing up and applying these premium pigments with the Sketchbox Signature Filbert Brush size number six. The shape and texture of my Filbert brush makes it incredibly versatile. Here I am swatching Elm Green right out of the tube, utilizing the wide edge of my paintbrush to put a lot of pigment down all at once. I can then dip my paintbrush in water for a more diluted, less thick paint that I'm going to swatch right below. And here I'm using both the width of the paintbrush and also the edge and the point to create more crisp, sharp lines. Right under the Elm Green, I'm swatching the Iron Oxide Red right out of the tube, then adding water right below. And then below that, I'm doing the same thing again with the Gardenia Yellow. And oh my goodness, I love these colors together. They look so great. I'm so excited to mix them up and to create beautiful autumnal paintings. A white Holbein Artist squash is also included in this month's box and is going to be perfect for mixing tints. This white is opaque right out of the tube and can be used over the top of your toned paper to enhance your highlights and add lighter values. It can also be diluted with water for more transparent light values. I'm gonna get started by creating a gradient. I start with the gardenia yellow and apply it right onto the paper, but this paint dried faster than I expected. And when I added the iron oxide red over the top, it was already dry. So I needed to wet my brush and bring in some fresh paint. I worked back and forth until I created a really even gradient and even transition between these two colors. A tint 
is a color mixed with white. And here I am using the gardenia yellow and the iron oxide red to create a bright orange. To tint this orange, I gradually add more and more white to this color until I get the desired value that I need. Lighter values are gonna be great to add more depth and dimension to your painting. So be sure to play around with creating several different tints of the colors that you mix. For a little extra practice with my gradients, I'm going to create a gradient from the gardenia yellow to the elm green. And just like before, I'm going back and forth and not expecting to get it perfect right from the get-go. It's a push and pull game. I also wanna play around with mixing some neutral colors. Here I am combining the elm green and the iron oxide red to create a deep neutral brown. These darker values are gonna be perfect for those areas that I don't need quite as much intensity. And just like all my other colors, I can turn these into tints too for lighter value neutral colors. On this fresh piece of paper, I have a couple of bugs lightly sketched in with pencil, and I am going to drop a really quick wash on each one of these sketches. A wash is a really thin, transparent layer of color, and for gouache, that just means that you're going to add a lot of water into your paint. I'm focusing on fairly neutral colors, so that first wash on the butterfly was the elm green mixed with the iron oxide red, and I'm contrasting that with some bright orange patterns on the surface of the wing. I'm also coming in with a neutralized red orange color. So that would be some of that iron oxide red with just a little bit of yellow and a little bit of the green in there. And for the spider, I'm using lots of iron oxide red, but I am diluting it with the sap green so it is softer and it is going to have a more autumnal feeling. Once these light washes are all the way dry, I can grab my Acrylograph pen and start doodling right over the top. When I say doodling, I'm not worried about every single detail being perfect, but rather I'm exploring the line quality and using the line to make the image and the shape more interesting and bring more information into it. Gouache wash and ink doodles can be a great way of capturing information quickly and getting your ideas efficiently on the paper. And as an added bonus, you can continue to add gouache right over the top of your acrylograph line work if it doesn't feel all the way complete after you've done your doodles. For this last piece, I'm going to start with washes of color, just like I did in the bug piece, but I am going to use these washes to build more layers of gouache on top. So I'm going to be really strategic with the colors that I choose and the amount of detail that I include earlier on. I'm starting with the elm green mixed with a little bit of the gardenia yellow and lots of water to create a green backdrop for this small floral piece. Once that green backdrop is complete, I can see the shape of the flowers starting to emerge. Now I'm going to start painting the petals. If I painted the petals while the green background was still wet, I would start to experience a lot of bleeding where the green and the yellow would mix together. And sometimes this can be such a cool effect, but this wasn't something that I wanted to happen in this piece. So I made sure that the green was completely dry before adding in the yellow. At this point, the yellow is watered down a bit, but I wouldn't say that it's transparent. It is a fairly opaque color still, but I'm adding the water so that it's easier to move around. In this gouache painting, the goal is to get some local color everywhere on the paper before I start coming in with details. So I'm also hitting a wash over the center of the flower and a wash of color where the bee is. Once the washes are completely covering the entire painting, I can begin coming in with more detail. The first details that I added were the lines in the flowers, and I mixed up a light orange wash to do this with a little bit of the iron oxide red, a little bit of the gardenia yellow, and then plenty of water. If the lines came out too harsh, I would go over the edge while they were still wet with a wet brush so that I could soften it and lighten it just a little bit. 
Once those lines were completed, I came in with more detail in the background. I want these yellow flowers to feel like they are in an environment rather than floating in a green field. So I looked at my reference image and I identified the darkest shapes. Then I anchored in those darkest shapes with a mixture of the elm green and the iron oxide red. Gouache allows you to continue to layer and layer and refine your painting over the course of several passes of color, which means you don't have to get it perfect or exactly right the first time. And you can start out with a general idea and make it more and more specific. Right now, I'm coming in with a more opaque yellow for highlights on the flowers and also some brighter yellow details in the background. I'm also using a variety of oranges and deep reds to pump up the value and the contrast in the center of the flower and to add more texture around the edges. Creating more contrast in value takes this painting to the next level. Here I'm adding in the darker patterns in the B with a mixture of the iron oxide red and the elm green. And I'm careful not to add too much water to this mixture so that I can keep it really dark and potent. And then while I have that dark color on my paintbrush, I bring it into the darkest parts of the background as well. This helps me create harmony throughout the piece and makes everything go together. After some final details in the flowers in the background, I come in with some pure clean white to really make the wing of the bee stand out. And I use this white in a couple places in the flower as well. At this point in the process, I have a lot of different options. I could continue to refine the details with the gouache. I could allow the painting to stand on its own, or because I have this awesome acrylograph pen, I can come in over the top of the dry paint and add some line details, which is what I'm choosing to do for this piece. I start with the B, which is my focal point, and I add some tight details to enhance the stripes on the B and the texture of the fur and the the wing. Then I come around the flower, which is secondary to the bee, but still quite important. And I add some details to the inside of the flower and the contours of the petal. I keep the texture or the line work on the petal very soft because the acrylograph pen is much darker than the yellow in the petal. And I don't want it to become too overwhelming and I want the color and the texture that I painted to stand out. So I'm not outlining all of the features in this drawing like a coloring book, but rather using the acrylograph ink to enhance what already is there. And just like I did in the bug painting, I can come right over the top of the acrylograph to dilute some of the edges, which is exactly what I'm doing with some yellow paint here. And now this piece is complete. I hope you learned a ton about using gouache and color mixing in this video, and we can't wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag SketchboxSeptember when you post your work online. For more unboxing videos and tutorials, you can check out our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.